Hey, it's Steve here at Soggy Bottom Farm. I've made a hell of an error here. Let me describe what I did and the extremes to what I will do when I got a problem. Right here is the battery indicator on this computer, the disc and the power. You know it's out right now. Let me turn this computer on. I'll show you here in a second taking forever for this computer to power up let me show you this one percent available plugged in and not charging see it's not charging I figured out what was wrong but let me show you what I did in an attempt to replace the battery without buying another one. Batteries are all over the place because I did. I got another one right here and I still had the same problem. So let me show you what else I did. In case you really got to have your computer and you're waiting on a new battery. Hang in there, I'll show you. This is why it didn't charge. If you read the bottom line right above the serial number, it says output 18.5 volts at 3.5 amps, 65 watt. This is the correct charger for the laptop. The output on this is 19.5 volts, 4.62 And uh, let me show you what I did. 18, 19 volts. Hang on. All right, I got the correct charger plugged into it now, and it's charging. Now, I know this is a bit extreme, but if you lose your power one day, you know, your battery's going to die, and you're going to need to... Uh, or have, maybe you want to talk to somebody, you know, communicate, email your mom, whatever. The phone's dead, the computer's dead, everything's dead. We need some power. Let me show you where to get some power. You probably can do this. I'm sure you can. A little bit of thinking. You know, this adapter puts out 18 volts when it's plugged into your wall. And I happen to have some Makita power tools. You probably do too. And they're 18 volts. What we got to do is get this battery right here connected to this computer. Step one. Step two. Strip back the wire on both of these. Let me put in a disclaimer here. If you don't know how to safely deal with the things you encounter while you're playing around, it's probably best you don't do it until you learn a little bit. So don't do what other people do without studying what's going on first. But I'm going to plug this thing back in. I'm going to find out what the voltage is and get the polarity correct. That's the next step. Step three. Okay. Get a meter. Let's plug this thing up. Measuring volts DC. Hey, can you see that? Do you need to see it? Here, let me put it right here. Wow, you should probably be a little more organized than me. Can you see it now? Here, let me turn it that way. There you go. I stripped back two out three of these wires. There we go. 19.61 volts. 
the red is the positive and the black is the negative let me throw in one more word of caution these batteries are not to be played with if you do anything like this and something goes wrong it's not going to be my fault look both ways before you cross the street but this this is something you should really consider anyways i got these two wires from the end i cut off plugged into the back of this computer let's see if we can turn this guy on make uh you know why not have uh more options available in our lives here here we go oh it's charging nose lithium ion batteries I didn't even charge that battery. That's why I own Makita. Wow, this computer. It's no wonder I keep it in the shed. When it comes on, I'll show you. Alrighty, there we go. I'm still plugged into this battery to the power port of this computer right let's see if it's actually charging the computer battery 11% remaining battery saver on I didn't expect that but anyways hey maybe this is a way of measuring the amount of life you got left in one of these batteries <laughs> anyways just goofing around on a rainy day the things that go through your mind hang in there, I'm gonna show you one more thing it relates to something else I made pertaining to Makita batteries we'll make this the largest computer laptop battery ever designed hang on hey i got an idea while you're waiting for this battery to charge go check out another video i made where i charged five of them at the same time it's not safe i'm not saying to do it but if you want to know where these metal plates came from go check that video out and come back we're almost done okay I got this thing assembled each one of these batteries is 24 watt hours this is a single road battery if you got the doubles that'd be 48 times 4 this right here is 56 watt hours so we're already almost double here but anyways there you go four of your little batteries 18 volts is what this computer needs to run Let's plug it in turn it on blow something up what else are we going to do on a rainy day hey that's cheating right there well i don't know power's out you might need them batteries we'll leave them in there give it a try it's something else to do with some of the stuff you got at home. You know, you may never uh, need to do something like this, but if you got batteries at home for these portable tools, this is something you could do with it, right? All right, this is Steve here. I'm going to quit goofing around and... Uh, Hey, let's see if this thing actually measures these batteries. It said 11% with one battery on it. 7% available. So it's actually reading the battery that's inside of it back here. It does have a battery in it. Nothing funny going on here. 
I don't have anything to gain by goofing around like that. Anyways, gotta go. Glad you stopped by. Come again. Believe it or not, I'm about to put a uh, stump grinder on that push mower. Oh, and there's the camera for getting my beaver. I got progress coming. Come back. Man, I guess I could have explained this. There's two plates here. One's hooked to the positive, the other negative, and that's how I got all them attached. Alright, I'm going.